A U.S. Congressional Select Committee on Monday raised the specter of China flooding the American market with legacy semiconductors and called on the government to take action to prevent such a situation at the earliest. The push comes amid the U.S.'s actions to prevent China's access to advanced semiconductor technology in the past year. What are legacy semiconductors or foundational semiconductors? How has China built its capacity in manufacturing these semiconductors? Why has a U.S. House Select Committee warned against a flood of these chips by China? Hello and welcome to The Print. My name is Keshav Padmanabhan and today I will be answering these questions and more. To begin with, on Monday, Representative Mike Gallagher, the Republican Chairman of the House Select Committee on the Chinese Communist Party and Representative Raja Krishnamurti, the Democratic Ranking Member on the Committee, jointly sent a letter to Gina Raimondo, the U.S. Secretary of Commerce, and Catherine Tai, the U.S. Trade Representative, calling on them to stem America's reliance on Chinese legacy of foundational semiconductors. We are concerned that the People's Republic of China is on track to flood the United States and global markets with foundational semiconductors. Foundational chips are the lifeblood of a modern economy and a modern military, the two said in the joint letter that was shared by the committee across social media platforms. So what is a legacy of the foundational semiconductor technology? A legacy of foundational semiconductor is defined as technology that is of the 28 nanometer generation or older or larger according to the Chips and Science Act signed into law by US President Joseph R. Biden Jr. in August 2022. Calling larger chips though as legacy is a misnomer as innovation continues in the production of these chips including the use of silicon carbide semiconductor chips which is expected to have an important role in decarbonizing the economy, according to a study published by the Center for Strategic and International Studies, a Washington DC-based think tank. The 28 nanometer chip, for example, was first introduced in the market by the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company Limited, commonly known as TSMC, in 2011. Following that, the idea that yesterday's cutting-edge technology is today's legacy chip. These chips are important in everyday consumer electronics, automobiles, aircrafts, broadband, and a myriad of other technologies that one uses on a daily basis. According to the CSIS study, 95% of the total semiconductor consumption in the US automotive industry comprise of legacy chips that led to almost a cut of 4.3 million vehicles from the production line during the COVID-19 shortage in these chips. In 2021, Apple was reportedly forced to curtail its production plans for iPhones and other devices because of the shortage of these legacy chips, further highlighting the importance of these legacy or mature chips to everyday consumers. <clears throat> On to the next question on China's increasing manufacturing capacity of such technologies. China is building significant production capabilities for these legacy chips that are found in sensors, power semiconductors and microcontrollers and found in everyday electronic consumer goods, vehicles and medical devices according to a study published in April last year by Rhodium Group, an independent research provider. China and Taiwan produce a combined 80% of chips between the sizes of 20 nanometer and 45 nanometer. For chips between the sizes of 50 nanometer to 180 nanometer, China and Taiwan account for 70% of the global production, according to Rhodium Group. In the next three to five years, the capacity for 50 nanometer to 180 nanometer chips in China alone would be operationalizing equivalent to that of the rest of the world during the same time period, according to the study published by Rhodium Group. This highlights its efforts to expand its production of these legacy chips. 
according to data made available by the Rhodium Group report. Of the announcements for the investment in new semiconductor fabrication facilities in March 2023, China and Taiwan alone accounted for 60% of the total manufacturing capacity for 25 nanometer to 45 nanometer chips. China alone controls 30% of 50 to 180 nanometer manufacturing capacity globally and within the next decade. And if these new investments are operationalized within the next decade, Beijing could account for 46% of the total global capacity, according to Rodium. What has been the US's response? In August 2023, President Biden invoked a national emergency preventing US companies investing in Chinese high-end technology sectors sem and semiconductors, microelectronics, quantum information technologies, and artificial intelligence. The focus of the Biden administration has been on preventing Beijing from accessing cutting-edge technologies as reported by the print earlier. However, the question of legacy of foundational chips has so far been outside the remit of US governmental action, a fact highlighted by Gallagher and Krishnamurthy in their joint letter. While the administration has taken strong action to ensure US advanced semiconductor technology is not transferred to the People's Republic of China, far less attention has been given to the risk that the surge of People's Republic China-made foundational chips pose to US economic security, the two said in their letter. Of the new or major expansions of semiconductor fabrication planned between 2022 to 2026 at 300 nanometer, the People's Republic of China leads the world with 22 projects while all of North America is stuck at 10, Gallagher and Krishnamurthy added and highlighted in their letter. In early 2023, the US had reportedly negotiated an agreement with Japan and the Netherlands to restrict the export of tools needed to produce chips at the 14 nanometer in size or smaller range. Such chips are used in critical technologies. However, during the COVID pandemic and in its immediate aftermath, a global shortage existed in the supply of semiconductors. A US Department of Commerce survey released in 2022 found that the most acute shortages were found in legacy chips of 40 nanometer in size or larger, not in cutting edge chips. A 2021 review of semiconductor manufacturing by the Biden administration noted that the US relies primarily on Taiwan, the Republic of Korea, and China for the production of legacy chips, and Taiwan specifically for cutting edge chips. The share of semiconductor manufacturing capacity on US soil has fallen from 37% 20 years ago and stands at about 12% of the global production the United States lacks sufficient capacity to produce semiconductors, the Department of Commerce Review noted. China, however, has called US's attempts to tighten over chip exports out and out economic bullying that is taking a toll on global supply chains. The US uses national security as a pretext to restrict chip export to China but the measures it has taken clearly go beyond the realm of national security and have gravely hindered the normal trade of ordinary chips for civilian use. The US has been asking certain countries to join itself in curbing Chinese companies. This has nothing to do with security. This is pure economic coercion, said Mao Ning, a Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson during a press conference on Monday. Thank you for watching The Print. Do tune in and subscribe for more such news and analysis.